It's a Thursday, November 4th, and it's a time for your Bobby to study morning news updates. Election regulators are reviewing the manner in which the electoral process in Barbados is managed. And while some political commentators suggest that a general election is around the corner, Chairman of the Electoral and Boundaries Commission, Leslie Haynes QC, has made it clear that the improvements being worked on at this time are merely coincidental to any perceived early voting. The next general election is constitutionally due in 2023. Emmanuel Joseph has more in this report. The Electoral and Boundaries Commission chairman is contending that his department does not know whether elections are in the air. However, he said the agency has started preparing for elections as part of its duty, so that at any time the date is announced, the commission would be ready. Haynes said that, for example, if the Prime Minister decides to call elections next year March, the department should be ready to facilitate the process. Turning his attention to the pending changes, Haynes revealed that the Commission has identified a flaw in the Representation of the People Act, which regulates election spending. The prominent senior attorney pointed out that while the legislation limits a candidate to spending $10 per constituent, it is defective because it does not place any spending restrictions on a party or anybody else for that matter. He said these are issues being worked on by the Commission in order to better regulate election spending and to simplify the expense returns by the candidates. The EBC chairman also addressed the provision in the Representation of the People Act, which requires electoral authorities to prepare a corrupt and illegal practices list and make it available for inspection before the Register of Electors can be published. YAC requires the Commission to prepare that list every year, which must contain the names and descriptions of the persons who, though they are qualified to be registered as an elector, are nonetheless disqualified from voting or be on the electoral register because they have been convicted or reported guilty of a corrupt or illegal practice. A statement of the offence must also be included on that list. The legislation also stipulates that the Commission makes that list available for public inspection at least 14 days before the Register of Electors is published. However, Haynes said the EBC does not have such a list. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. There is no need for persons who are discharged from isolation facilities or home isolation to present a negative test result to the employer to return to work. That's according to Senior Public Health Officer Dr. Arthur Phillips, who sought to clarify the proper procedure relating to workers returning to work after testing positive for COVID-19. Dr. Phillips gave the explanation while speaking on a forum with COVID-19 Public Advisor David Ellis on Wednesday. And I want to make clear, because this is something that we're hearing coming up quite often, that employers are asking for a negative COVID test for someone who's been cleared, who's been discharged from isolation to return to work. And this, this is not supported. This is not appropriate, uh, given that someone who's been positive for COVID can continue to shed. They're not infectious, but they can continue to test positive for a period of time, sometimes up to three months. And therefore, um, employers need to allow persons who have been discharged, who have been cleared, who have been identified as being non-infectious to return to work without a, a test. And we've also um, written consideration of this into the, the framework for the, the safe zones as well, where there would be a period of at least a month before these persons then get into the routine of being tested to be cleared, um, if, if then, uh, depending on whether they're vaccinated or not. Dr. Phillips also spoke about persons who have been in quarantine. Once a person no longer is having a, a known contact or, or risk of, of, of exposure, then they need to quarantine for at least five days and test as negative before being cleared to return to work. Um, I think these two things are very important because I think workers sometimes have questions about these, and employers uh, who may not be clear um, can sometimes uh, be, be asking questions or, or, or giving guidance 
that that is not quite in line with with what we are recommending and what we would expect. President of the Barbados Association of Retailers, Vendors and Entrepreneurs, Alistair Alexander, is concerned about the fairness and transparency involved in the allocation of stall spaces at the new Fairchild Street Market Village. Alexander complained that he contacted authorities several months ago regarding a young vendor not being allocated a food stall, although he has been paying for the stall in the old market since 2012. I was told by the manager of market himself that he would not be advocated a food stall, but he would be given a stall to do other business. This is madness. If he has relationship with the market as, as, a, as, a, as a food vendor, they can't just decide then to allocate him a space to do other business. They are telling him, they are telling me what type of business he does. Although, and it is not food vending, although he was allocated a space in this market for food. Right? I can carry you to the exact stall and show you. It is, a, it is a stall built by the market itself for, for food, right? And we are hearing this kind of nonsense. I am concerned. I am very clear. I speak clear. Barvin speak clear. When I see corruption, I am not going to call it nothing else. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'll admit, when the COVID-19 vaccines were first introduced, I was a bit skeptical. I wondered, how did they create these vaccines so quickly? I heard so many theories and was suffocated by all the noise. But once I did my own research and began speaking to my friends in the field, I got the facts and decided to take the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. I am now proud to say that I'm fully vaccinated. I am one who believes in choice, but I also know that with each choice comes consequences. COVID-19 vaccines have been proven to provide a layer of protection against COVID-19. We have been in this situation for far too long now. It is time to get our lives back. We still need to social distance, wash our hands and mask up, but having an extra layer of protection with the COVID-19 vaccines, we should feel more happy that we're protecting ourselves, our family and friends, our colleagues and our clients. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. The news from other region, Antigua and Barbuda has received another batch of Pfizer vaccines from Washington to inoculate its population against COVID-19. The 5,850 doses of other vaccine arrived on island on Wednesday. More in this report from ABS News. Councillor for Political and Economic Affairs, U.S. Embassy Barbados, Joseph Tordella, presented the vaccines. If this pandemic has taught us anything, it's that none of us are safe until all of us are safe. And vaccines are a key part of us uh, being able to get through this uh, pandemic. Tordella was accompanied by political and economic officer, U.S. Embassy Barbados, Thomas Fajusi. Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Ron Nisili Thomas, accepted the gift on behalf of Health Minister, Honorable Samalwin Joseph. So we're very pleased that we are able to accept the second tranche of the vaccines from the United States government. The donation from the U.S. government has certainly boosted our vaccination program that started in February. Even as the remainder of the second tranche from the U.S. arrives in the island on Thursday, the CMO says the nation looks forward to the third tranche. And finally, COVID-19 cases and deaths continue to trend downwards across much of the Americas for the eighth consecutive week. However, Assistant Director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Chavez Barbosa, warned that this progress was not a reason for countries to become complacent or discontinue the public health measures. He made the comments on Wednesday during PAHO's weekly media briefing on COVID-19. The decline in cases and deaths shows that our approach is working and it is critical for all of us to stay the course until everyone is vaccinated and protected from the virus. 
to date. 1.0 billion COVID vaccine doses have been administered across the Americas, and 46% of the population of Latin America and the Caribbean has been fully vaccinated. At least 32 countries have already reached the WHO's target of 40% vaccination coverage, and several more are on track to reach and surpass it by the end of this year. This progress is encouraging, but not surprising, thanks to our region's strong immunization systems. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.